How about I tell you an anecdote? Funny little cheesy architectural anecdote. And I put some science into it. Well, why not? So let me tell you to not support, not prompt your balcony. Maybe you have a normal cantilever concrete balcony, like 90% of the buildings do. And maybe you step on it or jump on it and it moves, it vibrates, jumps around. What can I do? I know, I can put a column underneath it. Now, is that a good idea? Let's see. There are two types of people. Ones that divide people in two categories and the ones that don't. If you're holding your breath to find out which of those I might be, let me help you there. There are two types of people. The cantilevers and the simple beams. The cantilevers have their roots somewhere, but they vibrate throughout their lives being somewhat unstable, at least for an inexperienced observer. And the simple beams like stability and security in their life. Steady job, family, you know the story. Now, if you ever went out on a balcony and it happened that it oscillates a bit, you might get scared, you might think it could fall, and you might come to the idea of putting a column or two below. If you do that, there is a huge chance that your balcony will collapse. This might sound counterintuitively, but in the same way that a steady job would be a dream for the beam person and a disaster for the cantilever person, you do not want to limit and restrain your cantilever balcony. And what follows is a simple statical explanation that you might find interesting. Let's start with simple statics. Imagine the concrete plate of our balcony. If you fix it on one end, it will bend something like this, right? A simple intuition will tell you that and the calculation will show you something that is called a bending moment diagram. A bending moment is a tendency of a section of this plate to rotate around its axis. The, di the diagram for a cantilever looks like this, that means th that means that this part will be under the largest amount of stress, which you can guess intuitively as well. If I started jumping here, you know that the cantilever would break here. And the moment and stress will start falling off toward the end. Now a beam, if supported on both ends, will have a diagram like this. And that makes sense too, right? A simple beam will bend like this and if I jump on it, it will break in the middle. Now why is this important for us? Well, you see, concrete is a material that can take a lot of pressure. That is why we use it. But concrete cannot take tension very, very well. Try to pull it apart and you might, well, pull it apart much more easily than you thought. That is why we can look at our bending moment and say, hey, if I imagine two slices of my balcony next to each other and I stand on the cantilever, they will try to rotate this way, which means in the lower part, they will press each other. Great, concrete can take the pressure. But on the upper part, they will be pulled apart. And that is why we introduce steel rebars. And that is why we have reinforced concrete. The concrete takes the pressure, the steel takes over the tension, which it does tremendously, I might add, and we have an awesome structure. But what happens if I step on a beam supported on both ends? Then if I look at those slices, they behave differently. Now the upper parts press each other and the lower parts are pulled apart, which means that when I reinforce a beam or a plate supported on both ends, I need to put the steel bars on the lower side and with the cantilever on the upper side. And by now you should have already understood the danger here. The feeling the cantilever person has when they're locked down into a 9 to 5 job, that their whole body starts to rip and be pulled apart because of their constitution. You give your balcony a support and a beam person looks at it and says, awesome man, finally some stability in your life. You must be happy, but your steel rebars are on the opposite side. The life puts its weight on your shoulder and there is no steel to hold the tension. The concrete rips apart and the whole structure is jeopardized. Your muscles cannot work, your spine has to hold everything until it breaks too. So that is why if your balcony oscillates a bit, you do not support it because it was not meant to be supported. You will meet people that cry when they get fired from a company and people that will quit and jump around exhilarated. You will meet people that love to wake up in the morning, have their coffee, see their work colleagues, arrange their desks, go to meetings, get a praise from their boss. And you will meet the ones that will tell you the moment someone tells you when you have to get up, when you have to go to work, or even what you have to wear, you're officially not a free person. There is no right or wrong. There is no better or worse. There are two types of people, cantilevers 
and beams. And although the analogy cannot be worse and I forced it maximally just so that I can share this statical anecdote and connect it to the two types of people I meet in my life, it kind of works and you kind of get the point and you were maybe even amused by this simple demonstration of why not to do what is not meant to be done. Now, if you're an architect, an engineer, you already knew this, it's simple, but it might made you think about the structure of people around you and how not all types of support and lifestyles work for all of us equally. So what type am I? What type are you? What to think about? In the meantime, subscribe, share and stay free. Yeah.